Peace family, oneness, love, and balance. How are you feeling? Well, I hope you're feeling fantastic because in this video, we're going to be taking a brand new look at the Adam and Eve story. And what better way to do that than grabbing a Bible? So let's do that. Huh. I didn't bring my Bible, but I got it on the internet. So I'm actually going to be running a screen recording so that you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at. All right, so now that we're on the same page, let's start. So we're here in Genesis chapter two. We're gonna start at verse eight, all the way down to chapter three. All right, now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. Wait, is that where I wanted to start from? No, I wanted to start from verse seven because it's gonna be important. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees flowing out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden, there were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Now, I'm going to jump down to 15, where God puts Adam, or man, in charge of the garden. The Lord God took the man out of, took the man, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought, to, he brought them to man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name so the man gave names to all the livestock the birds in the sky and all the wild animals but for adam no suitable help for no suitable helper was found so the lord god caused man to fall into a deep sleep while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and <laughs> then closed up the man's flesh and then closed up the place with flesh then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out from man and brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. That is, what, that is why a man le le leaves his father and, be and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame okay so the story is telling us that eve is born from adam up until the point we're reading right now we don't know that her name is eve based on the context in the story but what we do know is that adam was formed from the dust of the ground and i think it's really important that we do one thing first which is understand that we're using the english language to articulate our thoughts and the english language is set up in a form in a fashion by which if you're speaking about something, you're also speaking of its absence. So if we're talking about, wow, that guy has so much money, then we're also referring to people who don't have money, okay? So let's continue. And, okay, so what's so important about this? Well, if we look at our lives regularly, we have never once seen, not even a video recording of a man using his own self or somehow creating a woman. We have never seen it. But what we have seen though is every single human being watching this video right now has a mother and your mother carried you and birthed you. So if anyone would be saying this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, it would be females in our real reality because that's what really happens. But in the Bible right now, it's actually telling us that it happens backwards, but it's the only place in the whole world ever that it happens backwards. So I think that's something to note. So let's continue and check out this whole serpent part and then i'm going to explain to you why i'm making this video so now the fall now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that god had made 
first of all, it must have been named Serpent because Adam just had all the power to name him. So why didn't he say nothing about Adam? Let's continue. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? He's talking to the woman. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Did God say that, she, that you should not touch it? Because I didn't see touch when he spoke to Adam. But where was Eve when God said that? Because if you look a verse later, she was created. So how did she even know? Are they playing telephone? Because Adam must not have communicated the message properly because it was nothing about touching the tree. It was about eating the fruit of the tree. So, okay, let's just continue. We just looking at it because it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate. Like it doesn't, it doesn't sit. So you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for uh, gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. First of all, if she's so incorrect, if she's so not knowing, then why didn't she see anything else but wisdom? I'll wait for that one. I'll wait for that one because that doesn't make any sense. You're saying that if you see something good, you know it's good because you can see what's good about it. It's bad, you're tripping. I don't want to hear that because it doesn't it doesn't resonate in my mind if she saw lust or something else in that fruit then i would understand but now i just don't get it okay then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked so they sewed fig trees so fig leaves together made coverings for themselves then the man and his wife heard the sound of the lord god as he walked as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden but the Lord God called to the man where are you he answered I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid and he said who told you that you were naked have you eaten from the tree that I command you not to eat from the man said the woman you put here with me she gave me some of the fruit and I ate it you didn't even answer God's question. The answer was yes. That was blame right there. That was no, just because, oh, she, oh. Let's continue. Let's continue because you can see these characters in men today because this is what we're copying. Let's continue. So, uh, all right. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Watch the next verse. So the Lord God said to the serpent. He didn't even, we didn't even have a conversation. Literally, power is given by blame. So when you blame someone else for your circumstances, power just goes that way. Watch God. God don't even look at them after that. He didn't say nothing to Adam yet. Adam was in charge. So when you go somewhere and you, you walk into a bank or something and there's a problem at the cash register, someone else comes to deal with it. Okay, because the blame, if something goes wrong, is on the person who's getting paid the most, apparently, in this reality. So, if this is what's happening, then we need to know who to blame. We need to take responsibility. Because, obviously, when you do take responsibility, power is in your domain and God deals with you. So, it just seems like they gave the serpent the power and Adam named him. But then it's also the devil. So, we have to figure out who this person is and what's going on. Because there's a lot going on, obviously. So... But why is this all important? Well, it's important because if you just read this, if you just read this directly how I'm doing it right now, it creates a fictional story that's actually inverting the way that we think naturally because we all got mothers. Everybody, if you're watching this video, you got a mother. And if you don't, drop a comment. I want to see the video. Like, that's all I can say to that one. So if that's the case, then what is the understanding that we're actually supposed to be getting? Because that's backwards. And if you don't think it's backwards, it's because you think the way you're thinking is correct. But then, if you thought that women came from men, then you would actually be mentally disrespecting the natural flow of the universe. It's called order. And you would be disrespecting it. Because the way that it actually goes is the law that it actually follows. 
So let's continue. I'm a little hot right now. <laughs> let's go to verse, verse 14. Um, no, we already read verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed, you are, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between you, your offspring, and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And the woman said, and, he's, and to the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe with painful labor. You will give birth to your children. So is there a way to give birth that's not painful? Because every time we're speaking about something, we're also speaking of the absence of it. So we need to do some research, obviously. Um, all right. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Hmm. That doesn't sound funny, does it? It doesn't really. And now, as you can see, God is giving back the respect by which it was given. Adam blamed Eve. Eve spoke first. After, uh, she, she spoke before he did. But she also blamed the serpent. So the serpent spoke before. Well, God spoke to the serpent. So you see, see God's attention is going to who gets the blame. So you got to blame yourself. You got to take responsibility. And this is what we're learning in this first uh, Genesis 2. Okay. So. Her name wasn't even Eve until after. He, she was cursed by Adam. But anyway, we're going to jump into some more information right now, because when we start looking at um, when we start looking at this verse in the way that is protecting the truth inside of itself, we can see why when we speak about what we think the truth is, it resonates and it, we think that we know what exactly it is, because there's something called phonetics and phonetics is the articulation and the, the hearing of pronunciation of sounds. So we can see that. Yes, verse 7 in chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So what does this really look like? Let's just check and see. Because when you understand... Okay, so here we have it. The first thing. So here in this diagram, you can see that the atom transforms into a molecule and then to a macromolecule which is a, a conglomeration of molecules, and then it forms into an organelle, from an organelle to a cell, cell to tissue, tissue organ, organ system, organism. And if they can put this in the books and they want to teach us and instruct this information into our mindset, then we have to understand what part of this is what we're supposed to understand. So if we see and know that all things are formed from atoms and God is forming Adam, at, listen, just listen to the words. God is forming Adam from the dust of the ground. And the entire universe is created by atoms. We can't even physically see them unless you're using some type of technology. So we have to understand this because this image right here is, is being produced. Look, McGraw-Hill Companies Incorporated. But it's also portraying that men come first. But how if every single person right now, I don't know if we have to do a head count, is born from a woman. They don't make no sense. I'm not understanding it and it actually psychologically affects us deeper than we understand so we're gonna have to talk about this that's all we're gonna have to talk about it so now that we can see the process by which atoms transform into organisms then we have to understand that this might not be the truth because if it was then there should be a reproductive um, entity or someone who can reproduce standing right there at the right hand side but it wouldn't be this man, though, because he wouldn't be able to produce by himself unless you're sitting inside of the Bible, which we're not sure if it's actually happening or not, because we can see that we all have mothers. Should I say it again? All right, let's continue. Now we want to look into what do I want to look into next? Because I have a whole bunch of stuff for y'all. Um, we want to look into Eve DNA. When you Google Eve DNA, it shows it shows you mitochondrial Eve. And when you understand the, the topic mitochondrial Eve, you understand that it's talking about the mitochondrial Eve gene, which is DNA located in the mitochondria of a cell. And then you understand that mitochondria is a powerhouse for the cell. So every cell has mitochondria because every cell needs a powerhouse. So why is this important? Well, it's important because if you understand that atoms came, atoms are used to create humans, then you understand that the cells that are being 
uh, mo multiplied could not multiply without mitochondria. What is mitochondria? Well, it's like the chemistry center for releasing and creating changes with chemistry at that level. So then now, when we look at when we look at mitochondrial DNA in this reproductive um, reproductive liquid of a, of a male, we're talking about the sperm, then we can see that mitochondria actually doesn't even reach into the, to the male or to the, to the fertilized embryo from the, from the male. It doesn't reach, meaning that it's terminated before the fact that the embryo is fertilized. What does this mean? Okay, well it really means that the lady has her seed, her egg, and the male has his seed, the sperm, and hers has 95% of the mitochondrial DNA, and his got 5%. And the 5% that he has allows for there to be a chemical uh, interaction where the sperm can enter into the center of the egg and fertilize it, but then the sperm actually destroys all of its mitochondrial DNA. So then are you the seed of your father? It's a very good question. Because when you look at the genetics, it shows you that the sperm don't do all the work. And then we also see that we come from our mothers. So don't you see the misconception? Because it's really big now. I don't know how I could not see it. Especially looking at the way that men treat their women. It's like they don't even know themselves. They actually really think that women came from men. And they treat women that in that sense. And I don't think it's right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. I'm watching my mom and I can see all the work she does. It don't look right. It don't feel right. So we're going to continue. Mitochondria, mitochondria and mammalian sperm are usually destroyed by the egg cell after fertilization. This is very clear. So then, now we want to look at the etymology of the word Eve. Because when you look at the etymology of the word, it tells you the meanings by which the word has transformed through to, to arrive to its present understanding today. So we're going to look at it. Uh, proper name, biblical, biblical first woman, late Latin, from Hebrew Semitic, Hawa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it, it translates to a living being, okay? So we just talked about Adam, and now Eve is saying the definition of Eve, the name is a living being, right? So let's go back to the Bible, because the Bible says the same thing. I don't know why they told us that truth, and they didn't tell us that Eve birthed Adam. I don't know why they told us backwards. Look, uh, where is that verse? In verse 3, chapter 3, verse 20. Adam named his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all the living. What? What? I got question marks for you, uh, King James. I got question marks. I got question marks. You gonna answer them or not? Because I will. Okay? So, that, 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 that makes a lot of sense for me. Look at this. Let's look at the etymology of the word Adam. A-D-A-M. Okay? Biblical name of first man. Where's his body? Because y'all got a million old bodies. Y'all got dinosaur stones and sh So where is his body? That's why they put biblical name. Because it's actually not happening. Or it actually has not happened. Or where's the bodies though? Because y'all keep those. Okay. Okay. So a biblical name of first man. Pregnator of the human race. From the Hebrew Adam, man. Literally. The one formed from the ground. Oh, the one formed from the ground. So I want to understand Adam, A A T A T O M, because the phonetic signature. Let me show you the phonetic signature first. Look at this phonetic signature. You can see that when you're saying the word Adam, you start with an A, and then the second letter is a consonant, and then the third letter is a vowel. So phonetic signature is so real it's so real because if it's happening you wouldn't even know that it's happening because you're saying the truth but you don't know how to identify your mind with the truth so you're actually in a fake reality that's not really what it's supposed to be because the information that you've understood you've understood through a process but which is slightly backwards we got work to do we got work to do look at another another phonetic signature look at another one. Oh. look at another one consonant vowel consonant Where'd it go? Oh. Phonetics. Phonetics. What are, you, what are you saying every day? You're saying it. You know it. You know it already. You're saying it. So, phonetic signature. We can see that Adam and Adam have a relationship. We speak it every day. So, so what else do I want to show you? 
What else do I want to show you? Etymology, Adam, we already got all that. Function of the mitochondria. I mean, we can see the function of the mitochondria. I was telling you the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouse of the cell. They are organelles that act like digestive system, which takes in nutrients, breaks them down, and creates energy-rich molecules for the cell. That's what my mom does. She goes and buys food and does what she got to do and makes it really good. Like, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you not saying, rather? Let's continue. So we can obviously see that this is a, a fabricated story using the truth and using symbology and using allegory to explain what it is that we are supposed to believe in a much backwards fashion, okay? So the last thing I want to talk about before this video ends is we just understood that when you give your blame to something, you give your power to it. So where are, you, where are you giving your power to? Because I blame myself for misunderstanding this information. I blame myself. I don't blame no pastors, nowhere, so-called. I don't blame those guys. I blame myself because when they're speaking and when they're reading, my mind articulates their thoughts. If I don't say nothing, it's my fault. Don't come at me with that. Don't come at me with that because we're not having that. We're not. So what else did I, this is all I wanted to show you guys. When we went through the story, let's go back to the Bible. Where's my Bible? We went through the story. We saw that Adam named Eve after being the last to be spoken to because he blamed Eve. So let's actually talk about the mental concepts and the mental constructs, the psychology of these characters so that we can actually see and make sure they're not living or walking around in our midst right now. So if you watch Adam, with all the respect and all the authority, he took none of it. He took none of it. He took none of it. And Eve actually probably thinks that she is her fault for being cursed to the whole world, literally. Because through her action, so-called, we are now living in a world of sin. We're born in sin. Because she saw something good and it actually is good. Because if, if she saw anything besides wisdom, I can understand. But she saw wisdom. Something that man needs to make his life Fantastic. They didn't say nothing about Solomon's wisdom being bad. That 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 he should be sinning, sinning. Mm, isn't it? I mean, that's why I learned for myself, oh, because this one, dear, yeah, they could be talking now. Nah, you'll never hear it. So, what else? Is that it? Look at this. So they clothed themselves with fig leaves, right? That's what you said. This word is living because we can read it and it stands still every day and come back to it, it's the same. So, right here, verse 7, 3 verse 7, they, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sew, sewed fig trees, fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. But why did they do that? Because prior to this, they were what? They were, they were not aware that they were naked. But then they ate from the what? They ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil what is knowledge and good of evil let me just go ahead and slap a yin yang sign right here because knowledge and good of evil good and evil we know that's polarity that's duality that's seeing through your your two eyes not your one eye understanding oneness these are concepts that are in your mind's eye but you have to use your mind's eye in order to even realize these things so what does this mean what does it mean the, God, the, the tree of good and life or knowledge of good and evil. Sorry, I just messed that up. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, if you focus on something, you actually call more of it into your reality. Have you ever got your first car and like as soon as you get the car, you already see your car all over the place? That's part of it. It's focus. Like where your mind goes, that's where energy flows. So if you focus on, hey, that was bad or that was not good or that was this, that was that. Now what you're doing is you're hypersensitive you're making your mind hypersensitive to observe these observations more often, more often, more often, more often. If you talk to your kids or let somebody else talk to your kids about you, their kids are probably going to say you talk like this because they can hear the way that you speak in a certain format over time. So it's called observation. We have to become to, able to observe our own thoughts and also observe what's happening. Because if you think that what's happening is not working for you, that means you stuck on the tree of knowledge and good and evil. All things work together. It's very clear. I've seen a verse in the Bible so many times, I just can't even think of where it's at. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So, what does this mean? Well, that means if something bad happens, you have the power to know 
that all things work together already. So if something bad happens, you have to know what you're looking for. Look for something that's actually going to aid you and not and not uh, not being stuck where the bad things are. Because let's say, for example, you get into a situation with your car somehow, but you've never maintained your car. You don't take care of your car. This situation is helping you learn a lesson so that you maintain the things that you interact with. But you're going to be like, oh, I don't have $50. And then, and then, and then, and then. Because what? You're focused on what? You're focused on everything that's not working. So you're not going to find nothing else that's working. Change your focus. Change your focus. Change your focus. We got to think for ourselves in the sense that we think from the divine presence of God in all of us. Because without that, without that, just, just keep reading this and let somebody else read it to you. Because I, I, don't, I don't know how else to help. So this is going to be what it is. This is going to be what it is, family. I don't know if you've ever seen a man produce a woman, but if you do, get a video. Because I know my mother got me. I know when I came out the womb, I needed a breast and it was ready. That's called abundance. That's God right there. That's God work right there. I didn't have to wait to read this. I already knew. We already know as children. But when we start reading this and we read it incorrectly, and the story also plagues us because it's formatted in a fashion for us to be understanding it backwards, then of course we're going to have these types of problems. And we're just getting started. Whew. I know, I'm getting a little hot sitting here talking about this one. So with that being said, family, we're going to wrap it up right here. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something about this. Do your own research. Jump in the comments down below if you see anything in these verses that is very, very um, mind-boggling. Drop it down in the comments so we can do some more analysis. And I just saw, for dust you are and to dust you will return. But we'll talk about that that verse in another video because we need to realize how we're thinking why we're thinking so that we can think the best for ourselves and our families and our culture and our people if we can do that oh we can really do something with that being said subscribe to light power on youtube hit us up on instagram send us a message we love to chop it up this bible talk but we talk about everything so hit us up and think for yourself at least sometimes at least at least a little bit once you start you're not going to stop with that being said, talk to you again in another video. Peace.